And that's why I said before, we don't know what we don't know yet. Stage two and three will, uh, we think will be pretty exciting, but we're not even quite sure yet what the apparatuses or the software will be. We want our commercial partners that will come in with us. Um, some of those will be with us as we go around the 17 forums and workshops around the state. And as they engage with business as well, they may say, well, actually, we've got a product that we'd like to test or trial or launch. Uh, it might be from a Microsoft or a Alcatel or a Telstra or someone, um, but people that are in that space. So that's where we see it, where we will be, this is a, a 12 to 18 month program. We'd like to deliver it within 12 months. We believe the faster we can get there, um, the better it will be. And equally, a lot of the opportunity will lie in regions where it may be a year or two before they're switched on, but there's no reason they can't already be using the digital economy in uh, upfront now, and then when they do get switched on, it'll be so much faster, more clarity, all those sorts of things. So, John, thank you. Rather than throw to the MC again, I'll, uh, I'll just jump in. The tourism industry uh, doesn't need to be said. We're obviously very excited about this project and excited also about the National Broadband Network and the early rollout in Tasmania. Just give you a couple of, I guess, general perspectives on why it's going to be important for tourism and some of the challenges that our industry faces at the moment. Tourism, like most industries, is changing and changing rapidly. <clears throat> and who's driving that change? Well, largely in tourism, it's the consumer. We're all consumers of, of tourism products. We all travel. And I guess we just need to look at our own experience. Uh, maybe 10 years ago, we would have regularly gone to a travel agent, used a, an intermediary to book all of our travel. With online distribution, uh, with new technology, that has changed and consumers have grabbed a lot of that power back. They've taken control of those transactions and they like it. They're researching their, their travel online but increasingly also they're booking and they're paying for those transactions online. More and more tourism operators therefore need to change as well and I think in the current environment it's extremely difficult to operate in tourism if you have no presence. Uh, but it's going to be nigh on impossible in the future. But there's a lot of challenges to move any industry, particularly when you're dominated by small and micro businesses, as tourism is. 85% of businesses in tourism have five employees or less. And they're often engaged, head down, bum up, trying to just make a living uh, out of this industry that, thankfully, we all love. <coughs> But they're going to need to change, and this project is going to help to maybe be the catalyst for that change. The NBN is a great opportunity, but certainly within tourism, we don't see it as the end point. What the NBN is about for us is it's a tool. It's a great tool to access the digital economy, and that's the end game. That's where we want to get a lot of our operators get the tourism industry in Tasmania embracing fully the digital economy. The NBN is the tool, it's how you can access it more quickly, more reliably and do a lot more interesting things with it that ultimately aren't just interesting, they'll benefit your business as well. So our aim really in tourism in Tasmania must be to embrace the digital economy ahead of our competitors. We're a very small destination in a nondescript part of the Southern Ocean, but we can talk to a lot more consumers, we can be uh, very aggressive in the market at comparatively low cost, and that's about working smarter, and that's what the digital economy can do. <coughs> this project will help us to achieve this, because the more tourism businesses that embrace the digital economy, the greater the demand for the NBN. And the last thing any of us want is to have an NBN rollout where there is very little or insufficient demand. So to use a, a football analogy, and there's been quite a few of those floating around of late, we've been given a great free kick in terms of getting an early rollout of the NBN. It's important now that we make it count. We simply have to kick a goal from it. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Robert Mallett. I'm the Executive Officer of the Tasmanian Small Business Council. And uh, 
can I just take this opportunity to, whilst uh, so many business people are here, to acknowledge uh, the, uh, our recent loss of Rod Howell, who is the chair of the Tasmanian Automobile Chamber of Commerce, a valued member of the TSBC, uh, who died uh, the other day whilst diving. He was a giant in the small business sector, um, a very successful small business person, but gave an awful lot back to the industries. And I know from our meetings that we have and our regular dinners, he'll be sorely missed. So, um, yeah. What are you doing? I don't know. I'm trying to download that new antivirus thing. Well, how come it's taking so long? Well, I don't know. Is it working? Well, I don't know. There's little green bars saying so they're going up. Well, how quickly? Well, I don't know. Just every now and then they're working. Are you actually online? I wouldn't know. How do you tell? Well, I don't know. You click on that thing over there. Yeah, it says I'm doing 50 megabits per second. Yeah, but the other thing it says I'm only downloading it at 0.9 kilobytes per second. Well, I don't know. What are we going to do about it? Heaven's note. The Premier's been banging on about some NBN thing lately. I, I don't know. That'll come soon enough, I suppose. Well, how do we find out? Ladies and gentlemen, we find out by going to the education sessions that have been offered by NBN for Business, the 17 places around Tasmania over the next six weeks. That scenario I put out, portrayed, is, I would guarantee, happening in hundreds of small businesses throughout Tasmania anywhere between the hours of 8am and midnight every day of the week. Because that's when us small business people do our work. It's not always just between 9 and 5. So what are we going to do? What's this going to do for those people who are having that sort of problem? One of the things, it's going to provide certainty. There are many parts of Tasmania at the moment who have uncertain access to their broadband and their internet services whether that's been achieved by 3G or whether it's by copper or whatever. It's uncertain, it's intermittent, they can't rely on it. Fibre to the home and a high quality wireless to your roof will provide that certainty for small business people across this state. It will provide speed. There's no doubt about it that uh, when you look at some of the examples that are available on the net, we won't have to be sitting around for hours on end waiting for some small antivirus program to download because it just takes that long to do. We're going to get it when we want it. It's going to provide convenience because it's going to enable our fibre optic to provide not only our internet services, it would provide our telephony services. It could also provide our television services. It can provide a whole range of services, some of which are only being dreamt of at the moment, but give us 12 months to 18 months and we'll be out there actually delivering some of this stuff to small business people and to residents in the, in the community. And remember, our small business people are individuals. They are the residents of our community. They just happen to run a business at the same time. It's going to assist with compliance. How many of us in the small business world are fed up with red tape, are fed up with the compliance, are fed up with the time it takes and the cost it takes and the totally unproductive nature of complying? With new federal government initiatives along with the partnerships with state and local governments will have the small business reporting initiative which will enable forms to be filled out um, populated automatically and services like the uh, NBN and the speed and the convenience that will bring to small businesses so they don't have to spend quite so much time complying will be a significant bonus for all of them. And the NBN has brought around uh, a significant amount of cooperation as Roberts has already mentioned um, we are taxpayers too, and we're also in business, and we're all about getting the biggest bang for our buck, the best bang for your buck as a taxpayer, which is why we've come together voluntarily to actually put together our money, pool our ideas, pool our resources, and ensure that we can provide the biggest range of educational uh, opportunities for every person in this state. So, uh, Premier, can I congratulate you on the initiative A to get it up and running? Uh, my fellow partners within the thing, can I congratulate you on your willingness to want to work together to make sure this is going to be the, a major success and a model for what may happen for the rest of the country in the future. So what do we want? We want the NBN. What, when do we want it? We want it now.